there, everybody. Bill Sparks from Gilead Ministries. And just real quick, I want to say good morning to everybody. Welcome to Friday Morning Devotion. Except it's not morning, so therefore it's not Friday morning per se. It's Friday morning in the afternoon, which makes no sense probably to at least half of us. So, But this is the afternoon edition of Friday Morning Devotion. Um, I am doing the devotion this afternoon because this morning I had the privilege of spending time with Rick Berberia and the team at the Grant County Rescue Mission as we participated in what's called Mission Possible, which is a golf scramble. And yes, I love to play golf, and yes, I love to support good organizations, and those two went together this morning, and uh, the opening I had was to play this morning. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity to play golf this morning and uh, had a blast. Um, shout out to all those guys that played with me, uh, Blake Lefever, uh, Lefever and... Um, uh, uh, Steve Fields and Mr. Noah Pickering. That's who we hung out with this morning. We shot 59, which is 13 under, which is pretty stinking good. We had a blast. I know we were tied for first place when I left the course a little while ago. So shout out to Rick and his crew. Thanks for having a good event and for inviting us to be a part. Thankful for the opportunity to spend time with you and your staff. And uh, spend time on the golf course is always good time, no matter what. So, well, as we get started this afternoon, I'm thinking all of us have been probably getting kicked into this whole summer idea, especially with the crazy temperatures we've had. And so, with summer and picnics and all that upon us, you can probably smell the grill right now, even as I talk, right? Um, with all the food that is consumed, there's also the part of the picnic that's the most important, and that is the dessert part. By the way, for those of you who have not seen it before, and I'm not a big fan of like fun, cute words, but this one's kind of fun. Did you know that dessert is stressed spelled backwards? That's exactly right. So the best way to face stressed times is to eat dessert, right? <laughs> that sounds good to me. So with that said, here's what I want to do in the comments down below. If you would, please let me know what your favorite summer dessert is. What is your favorite summer dessert, whether it's a family get-together, whether it's a, a picnic, or whether it's a grilling out in the backyard? What is your favorite summer dessert? Just make sure you comment down below and let me know that. So today is the first in a series uh, by the title of Let Freedom Ring. We're going to spend uh, now through the end of July um, doing this series, talking about freedom each week and what it looks like. This week, we're just going to talk about what is freedom. Next week, we'll have some, obviously, patriotic overtones to our time together. So uh, looking forward to the 4th of July weekend and doing the Friday morning devotion next Friday morning, which, by the way, will be in the morning at 8.30 a.m. You won't be confused and wonder what's going on and wonder if you missed it because today, some of you click, probably kicked in at 8.30, and you're now watching this recorded, and you're going, oh, what happened at 8.30? Okay, it's 1.30. I explained it earlier. Go back and listen to the tape. So, all right. So today's the first in the series, Let Freedom Ring. Um, and we're going to spend our time now through July talking about what it means to have freedom. As we spend our time together today, I want to dig down into this idea of freedom a little bit. So here we go. All right. Some thoughts about freedom. Number one is this. God gave us freedom when he gave us our life in the very beginning. When Adam and Eve was created, they were created free. They had a free will, an opportunity to choose the things that they wanted to do. And so they were, cho they were created free because freedom has a risk to it, okay? But I'm telling you, it was worth the risk for God to give us free will. I can't explain why we decided to do something called sin. I can't explain why with everything that God provided that we decided to not listen. I say we, I know it was Adam and Eve, but you and I have lived with that from this point forward. And I tell everybody, if you were Adam or you were Eve, you'd have probably made the same decision. Stop slamming them and leave them out of the equation. Look in the mirror and you'll find out what you do with freedom. And it may not be always the things you should do either. So we are stuck with this idea, the fact that we do have freedom and stuck's not the right word, but it certainly fits when we talk about we are stuck with free will. Because some of us seem to have a difficult time making sure that we use our free will accordingly. But freedom is God-given free will, the opportunity to have freedom to be free from the things that would harm us and hurt us, that would cause us pain and struggle, to be free from those things, not in their presence, but in their power within our hearts. And so from the very beginning, God created freedom, and he gave us freedom and he gave us free will. Secondly, as a result of that, from that point forward, and from the foundation of the earth the scripture talks about, there is a plan that was set into place that would allow men to be free again. 
His idea for them to be free from what would harm them eternally was set into motion, not free to do anything they pleased, but freedom from sin. And then therefore, when we're in a position where that we need freedom really from ourselves sometimes, there was already a moral compass that was put into the heart of mankind to let us know what freedom felt like and where we should or should not go. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 that eternity was written in the hearts of men. The third thought is this. When Jesus came to the earth, he came to make sure freedom was available to all people, no matter who they were, where they were, or where they came from. God had in mind when he sent his son Jesus that he would give every man the opportunity to be free. And so as a result of that, you and I are the recipient of the reality that Jesus Christ came and died on a cross, gave his life, and then when he gave his life and died, he died covering our sins. He was the sacrifice for that. And because he was the sacrifice for that, then you and I can know freedom from sin, which is the next thought. Jesus came to set the captives free. You say, captive to what? captive to sin. He come to set us free from that sin, which brings me to the heart of this first devotion. And that's this. Listen as Paul expresses this idea of the importance of freedom as he writes in the book of Galatians. God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. You see, Paul's concern was in the midst of being free from sin that we would try to impress God as to how good we were because we were free. And then by doing something important, God would say, oh, look at how important they are. When in reality, you and I are not the center of the universe. God wants to set us free from us thinking that we are the center of the universe. And then when we are free, Paul is warning us to not go back and make ourselves slaves to the things that we were slaves to before, specifically slaves to our own desires and to sin. And so you and I need to realize that God is doing something important in your life, and it's Him that's doing it, and that as you cooperate with Him by re re being willing to release yourself into His care and into His direction and into His power, He will continue to make you into someone who is less and less a slave of sin, and you will know more freedom than you've ever known in your entire life. So for this first Devo, I want to talk to you about some freedom handles that you can hold on to. There's three of them, and then I'll close. The first one is this. If you and I really believe that there is a God, even if it's just a fascination of our imagination at this time, we must be willing to look at what God says is important if we're going to be free. In other words, if God created freedom and we believe there's a God, if we truly want to experience freedom, we have to look to that God to find that freedom. Looking somewhere else is like buying a brand new grill for summer grilling and using the blender instruction manual to put it together. It's like buying something new like a grill and then deciding to use some other instruction manual instead of using the manual how to put it together. We're trying to put things together in ways that were not intended because we were not designed that way. And so we think by having freedom to sin or freedom to do drugs or freedom to have sex in ways that God's not created as the right way, freedom to make and say and do and whatever, this freedom that says I should be able to do anything I want is not freedom. Okay, and if you believe in God, you have to be willing to let God define what freedom is, even if it's just a small fascination of your mind. And then secondly, to say you want freedom, which was created by God and given to us by God, and ignore those boundaries that God has set up to keep us free will only cause you more harm and could possibly cost you your physical life, maybe even your eternal life. So by ignoring what freedom really is, it costs. And it's so true. It's not just something we talk about in a spiritual realm. It's also true in so many different areas, even in the, the world that we live in and the social settings that we have today. To deny what freedom truly is means to cause someone else to be in slavery to the wrong things, to the wrong desires, to the wrong ways of life. And so today, if you want to be free, I want to give an offer of freedom. 
If you're already someone who has placed their faith in Christ, then set aside your checklist of things you think is impressing God. Your family and friends may be impressed with your talents, but God is not. He is the God of the universe. He created the earth. He created the world. He created the stars. He created the Milky Way. He's not impressed with you and I. He's not impressed with how good we think we are. He is only impressed by one thing, and that is his son, Jesus Christ. So make sure that you allow yourself to live a lifestyle that's not just some religious lifestyle, but it is free of all the trappings of religion, walking in the footprints of Jesus, loving like Jesus did, and living like Jesus did. Jesus didn't go around giving his disciples a bunch of rules to follow. Instead, he said, follow me, and then I will make you. That's what happens. When you follow Jesus, he begins to make you into something. And then secondly, if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to take seriously this invitation to trust Jesus to forgive you of all your sins, to trust Jesus to give you eternal life, to trust that he came here and lived on this earth and that he loved on this earth, that he died on this earth, that he was buried on this earth, that he rose from the dead out of this earth and now sets in heaven making intercessions, making people right with God because they're just willing to pray to him and say, Jesus, I just know I need to be right with God and you're the only way I can do it. And so my invitation for you is to find freedom, the true freedom for the very first time and to ask Jesus Christ to be your savior. Will you do that today? You're not promised this afternoon. You're not promised tomorrow. I'm not trying to play games. I'm not trying to play the shame thing. I'm not trying to play the guilt thing. It's just true. I worked with the coroner's office for seven years, and I watched people of all ages die that got up that morning not knowing they wouldn't finish the day. I have no guarantee I will finish this day because I know Jesus Christ is Savior. I have hope beyond this earth. If you want that hope beyond this earth, accept Christ. So thanks for tuning in. And before I go, remember, share Friday morning devotions on your social network pages. Share it in email. Let your friends invite them together to come and watch Friday morning devotions along with you. And each week now through the end of July, we'll be talking about Let Freedom Ring. And we'll t cover one specific aspect of freedom each week and how you can have freedom from things or have freedom in things. So as we finish, make sure you tell me down below what is your favorite summer dessert. Comment in the comments down below. And don't forget, like I said, share Friday morning devotions with your family and friends. So, all right, for the afternoon edition of Friday morning devotions, I want to thank you for tuning in. God bless you. I hope you have a great rest of this Friday and an amazing weekend. All right, God bless and bye-bye.